Welcome everyone to our first podcast, Earth and Body Ecosystems. Hi, I'm Heidi. Hi, I'm Joyce. And together we are Earth and Body Ecosystems. So what's that all about, you want to ask? Well, first we're going to do our bios and I'm going to allow Joyce to start with her bio. Joyce? Hi, I'm Joyce, and I teach people how to maximize their health for a better quality of life holistically with my products, my speaking, and my coaching. So how did I get started doing this? Well, back in 2008, my husband became ill. The doctor told him that he had recurrent mono and he needed to take a month off of work. So he did that, and a month later, he's still sick. He's not getting any better. As a matter of fact, he's getting worse. He goes to the doctor because he had been doing research and he tells the doctor that he, there, he has symptoms that don't, does not match the diagnosis. But that is, well, those will go away when the mono goes away. So, okay. So two months go by. Meanwhile, my husband, who's a morning person who gets up in the morning, he's all ready to go for the day, starts working and whatnot. Half hour later now, he's back in bed and he's sleeping 16 hours a day. The doctor says, oh, well, you have chronic fatigue syndrome. So three months go by, he's still not getting any better, six months. Uh, finally, the doctor says to him, he says, you know, he says, it doesn't look like you're gonna get any better. You might as well go ahead and file for disability. Well, my husband didn't like that because we do not like depending upon the government to take care of us. It turns out that a childhood friend of his had a health store. So, so she invited him there and she showed him how to detox with the foot bath ionizer using broken cell Corella and to replenish nutrients using vitamin C and vitamin D. Well, he started getting better. He got well enough to go ahead and get a desk job. And what I left out. So how, how did he find this out? How do you find out he had mercury poisoning? Well, he was watching TV one night and this comedian came on who had eaten sushi for 20 years and led to mercury poisoning. But when he started describing his symptoms, my husband went, that's me. So then he started doing the research to figure out where the mercury was coming from. Well, he was a truck driver and he was over the road at that time and he would take cans of tuna with him. Well, tuna contains mercury. For some reason though, he wasn't satisfied with that. So he kept doing more and more research and finally, it led to the amalgam fillings in his teeth, the silver ones that they're like 50 cent mercury, and he had 10 of them in his mouth. So the, his friend who had a health store told him about a dentist that could safe, safely remove the amalgam fillings, and he went there, and he had half of them done. And felt that's when he actually started feeling better, was able to go and get the desk job. And then he finally just went the heck with it. He had all the rest of them removed. And then his, his, his health started really getting a whole lot better. He did continue to do the detoxing, vitamin C and vitamin D also. Um, so yeah, he started, get, he started to get better. And that was in 2000, late, it was actually late 2008, early 2009 when he had gotten sick. So then in 2000, when he was doing his research, he had found out that the American Dental Association had a gag order on the dentist where they couldn't tell people that the amalgam fillings were toxic or they could lose their license. As a matter of fact, the dentist that he went to to have the fillings removed had told him that he could not put it on his chart that they were making him sick, that he had to just put that he wanted them replaced. So, I started doing a lot of research because at this point, the Western medicine had failed us. He told his doctor that he thought he had mercury poisoning and the doctor literally laughed at him, wouldn't do any tests or anything to find out if what he thought was true. So I just started doing a bunch of research and started finding out, you know, what other things, cause if, if the American Dental Association if, if we're being lied to by them, who else would be in line for? And that's when Pandora's box just flew open. And I figured out how toxic our world really is. 
and decided that we needed to change our lifestyle. And one of the first things that I did was uh, the beauty care industry. I found out how corrupt that industry is and that's allowed by the FDA. The FDA doesn't give a rat's butt, but they don't have to list certain ingredients because it's for part of their formula. And there's just all kinds of harmful uh, chemicals in the products. So even organic or, or natural can't necessarily be trusted that you would find in the store. So I thought, well, who could I trust except for myself? So I started formulating my own skincare products and learning about herbs. And I ended up turning into a business, which I didn't expect. So now I have the uh, a lot of skincare products and some some room sprays, uh, some dog shampoo. I also have some shungi and some other crystals. I make crystal jewelry. So not all of that's on my website because I like to create one of a kind pieces. But if you're interested in any of the products that I have to offer. You can go to hborganicskincare.com if you're interested in having me speak at an event or interested in coaching. You can go to majesticterra.com. And now, the lovely Heidi. Thank you, Joyce. So I grew up on my grandparents' dairy farm. We had our own house, but we were pretty much smack dab in the middle, surrounded by their property. So that was my uh, upbringing in the natural world. Um, this was before Big Chemical got a hold of the farming industry. So we were pretty much organic before organic was a thing. Um, but anyway, my I was fortunate also to have my paternal grandmother um, in the same area. So I grew up with both my grandmothers who love plants, all kinds, the woodland plants, the meadow plants, garden plants. Um, in fact, my maternal grandmother brought um, woodland plants into her um, lilac bushes, the bottom the you know, the undergrowth. She would always bring like uh, Jack in the pulpit, Beth Root, and all these lovely, lovely plants. So that really sparked an interest in me. And my dad was a pharmacist and my mother a registered nurse. And so I had an idea of how the medical system worked, okay? And as I got older, I had a severe reaction to an antibiotic. And I was like, this got to be a better way because I knew of the plants and I knew that the plants could work for you because my grandmother had spoken about that. Both of them had spoken about the medicinal properties of the plants. So I put the intention out that I was going to study herbalism. So, you know, working a good solid month on the intention um, because I was also got into esoteric um, thinking at the time or esoteric reading. So I was really studying the elements and uh, learning about how powerful our words and our intentions are. So I put that intention out and I think it's very important to tell about that. And so I would say within a year, I found myself working as a working apprentice at Wise Ways Herbals. And I later went on to take a therapeutic herbalism course with Tanya at Blazing Star Herbal School. And I also did a couple of workshops with the Susan Weed, which we will probably get into a discussion about that at some point. Um, I'm also a level two Reiki practitioner. And I also am a professional tarot reader, which I am very proud about. Uh, I started, it really fell in with the elements and the esoteric studies esoteric studies um, back then. Um, so I started that in about the 80s. And then in the 90s, that's when I really got into the tarot. And then in the 2000s, I became a professional. Um, my life has not been easy. Um, Joyce is not going to like what I'm about to say, but it's just, remember, it's just a technical term. So that means I this is a technical term, Joyce, don't shake your head. Um, I suffered from morbid obesity for most of my life and I do not identify with that terminology anymore. 
I found keto and I'm doing much better. Um, still not perfect, but for me, I'm happy. So there. So that's, you know, really, um, that's cutting out all sugars, all flours, and basically eating meat. I was a vegetarian for 20 years and it wasn't working for me. So, you know, it's a high fat diet and like cures like, and that's something I will get into in herbalism. I'm also an artist. I do, um, oh, can't think of the term for the word, but eclectic art, you know, uh, that's kind of what it's like. And I'm also a wool spinner and I dye my own wool. I did several years of really intensively dyeing my own wool. I'm not so much into that now, but I still spin knit crochet. So all that stuff, I've made beautiful altar cloths and sold them. Um, I don't have a website up at this time, but I, I plan to do that again. I have had a website in the past, but if anyone ever is interested in contacting me for herbal consultation or um, a professional tarot reading, they can email me at colorcauldron at yahoo.com. And that is C-O-L-O-R-C-A-U-L-D-R-O-N at yahoo.com. So now... So I thought well, this would be a great time to see what to expect. So what will we, you expect to hear from our podcast? So what will be the topics? Well, everything basically. But earth and body ecosystems, UFOs, paranormal, tarot, of course. Rants. Hmm? Rants. Rant. Like sometimes rant. <laughs> then we rant. So basically, you'll be listening in on two friends' conversations, uh, and basically, but also be educated too, because between the two of us, we have a lot to share. So I've been studying. Well, I would say most of my life, because it started with my grandmother's. I've been studying the herbs since my childhood basically but it really opened up to me in 1999 and forward and once you start herbalism you cannot stop studying it's always a work in progress just like me I'm a work in progress and I'm damn proud of that too so we're all works in progress exactly so I'll let Joyce um and also we will be having guests and I'll let Joyce go into her list and then I'll go back into mine a little bit of what to expect yeah, so basically, you know, it's anything having to do with the body and having to do with earth. And one of the things that we are going to touch on will be the natural vibrational frequency, which everything in the world has a vibrational frequency. We are all interconnected through this vibrational frequency. And we will be discussing how that affects your health and ways that you can see if your vibrational frequency is too low and how you can raise it. And that's all, there's some natural fun ways for doing that. One time we'll be talking about that, you know, don't know when, but we're just letting you know what you can expect to hear. So Heidi, what about you? What else will you be sharing? Well, probably um, one of the first topics I went really, <laughs> Joyce knows this very well about me, is really deep dive into essential oils. There is so much misinformation out there about, and I'm just going to say here, and we'll talk about that more in depth, some of the companies um, just forwarding things that are not good for your body. And I, I know this because I've studied herbalisms and I have a background and I can explain this all scientifically to you why essential oils are toxic, can be toxic to your body. Uh, can they, should you be using them? That's up to you. But there are definitely cautions to be using essential oils. Also, I want to dive into ecology. What is it, right? What is um, ecosystems, ecology, ecosystems. Okay, I'm used to the Northeast. I've got some books coming because I want to really study the Southwest ecosystems. And ecosystems like our bodies are not static. They change. Like fields change to forest, ponds become fields. So 
these things happen. And so I kind of want to delve into that because that has a lot to do with the herbs. They just don't show up out of the blue. And these herbs that we can purchase in bulk started in the forest and in the fields and they are still there. So, so that's very important. And also that goes along with invasive plant medicine. There's a whole story about these invasive plants that come into an area and take over. Actually, they fulfill a function when humans have destroyed an ecosystem and it needs to rebuild. So we'll delve into that. Also, um, tarot, <laughs> one of my favorite topics. So I'm a professional tarot reader. A lot of what I do with, on the professional side is predictive tarot. And tarot can work for that, but we have free will and we have choices. So our choices will really predict the outcome. But it does work if those set of um, circumstances and the frequency stay true, then that will work. What my roadhouse, which I really love is path working with tarot. And that's asking the deep dive questions of what do I need to know to achieve this goal? What's blocking me from achieving this goal? This puts the power back in your hand other than being predictive. Also, I didn't mention as a tarot reader, I'm also highly intuitive, clairconsciousness, and I didn't pronounce that good, I murdered it. But basically what it is, is clear knowing. So I just have this inner knowing, I get messages. When I read tarot, it just opens me up and I get messages that come in and these, you know, and they've been verified. I'm like shocking me, but verified me. And actually I, I learned this from animals first. I realized I was reading animals. I thought I was just joking around, but I was literally reading animals when I jokingly said to a friend that her dog wanted water. And I said, I'm, only, I'm hearing, is he saying water, water, water? Uh, so I assumed he wanted to drink water. Well, I wasn't far off. The poor dog had to pee a river. <laughs> so in his mind, he was thinking liquid and I was hearing liquid, but I just, you know, but I finally connected and I realized this was not a game I was playing. It was real. That was close enough for me that like, oh my God, this is real. I'm actually reading the animals, but I can't read my own dog. <laughs> it doesn't work that way. Um, what else? And so basically that's, some of what I want to get to, there'll be more, like I said, I have friends that have written books. I want them on paranormal investigation. That kind of goes in with tarot a lot. Um, UFOs, that's a hot topic now. And I have no qualms talking about that. That doesn't bother me. I, I kind of, there's a joke, you know, every, anything, even the kitchen sink, you know, we'll throw it all in there because um, I think, over the years that me and Joyce have known each other, I don't think there's a topic we haven't touched. That pretty, we're pretty much on point. And this is kind of why we got into doing this is Joyce had her own radio program, um, you know, on Wolf well, Spirit Radio. And, you know, I was a guest and I like, oh, I loved it. And I kind of like doing YouTube, but I have this love hate relationship with YouTube at the moment because I do not believe in censorship. But this video will probably go up because it's pretty benign on YouTube just to show people what's going on. So that's, you know, kind of what to expect. And we'll have guests and we will open the Zoom room after we get a few of these done where you can come and ask questions and interact at, with us at some point. So, you know, that's the way we're gonna do it right now. And I'm sure Joyce has more to add and then we'll get into some more details. I do, Heidi, thank you. Um, yeah, another thing we will be discussing is the electromagnetic field, both within the humans mm -hmm. and that, that surrounds us. It's also known as EMFs, so that it has to deal with electronics and how they affect our body and what we could do to protect ourselves. We'll also be talking about one of my favorite subjects, crystals. <laughs> Love my crystals. And you know, people think they're just pretty objects, people are attracted to them and they don't know why. And there's various ways that they could be used and we'll talk about that. 
And then we're gonna talk about toxins, you know, the toxins that are in our environment, not just outside, but also in our homes. Our, our ear in our home is actually more toxic than the ear is outside. So we'll be talking about that, what you know, the toxins in our house, what we can do and how we can clean up the air in the house. And when Heidi was speaking about essential oils, I was just curious to know, Heidi, do you use essential oils? Very sparingly. Mm -hmm. I, I already knew she did. I just wanted to, you to hear it from her. <laughs> <laughs> I, I use them too, but you know, mainly in our, our diffuser, but we won't get all into that. We can talk, we'll talk about that at some other time. Yes, we so, will. <laughs> so yeah, we, you know, I, Heidi and I have known each other since 2015 when I started my first podcast on Wolf Spirit Radio that she had mentioned. And it's really funny because I'm here in Louisiana, she's in New Hampshire, and we've never met. <laughs> we've just talked about the years we have ongoing conversation every Wednesday so we decided well why not share what we're talking about on the phone and just bring everybody else in with us so right. that's that's what we're doing yep and we have always and and we've had heated conversations so um you might see a heated conversation but we respect each other because we respect each other's opinion even if we do not totally agree so that's, You're right. we can be adults about that. Yes, we can, we can be adults. We just agree to disagree. Exactly. I, she's not going to change my mind. I'm not going to change her mind. And that, that's perfectly fine. You know, but you might, you it, never know. Us... You never know. It depends on, yeah, you know, you, how you backing certain, up your things. Yeah. And that's another, you know, yeah, go ahead. You were talking about your, your love of ecosystems. Is that what you, ecology? ecosystems you know yeah all okay, right well, then body ecosystems well right now my whole thing is looking into sacred geometry and how Which that fits. yeah how that plays into our world so and i bought heidi recommended a book and i bought it the only time i read it was when i went on vacation to dustin dustin i haven't opened it up since so so speaking of sacred geology that's something i also i didn't mention in my bio and i usually don't often mentioned, I don't know why, because it was a very important part of my life at the time, but I was involved in um, a place in Newport, New Hampshire. It was gonna be called the New, the Newport Earth Institute, Newport Earth Institute. And the idea was to teach all of these earth-based things. This was before I became, got into herbalism. So there was Dowsing, um, um, Mighty Kane, um, Vincent Bridges was involved and Vincent has since passed away, but he was also on the Discovery Channel because he was into, um, he knew a lot about Nostradamus and the, the, the quatrains, I believe there it's called. And so this was all about sacred geometry. And so I knew all about Dan Winter, if you're into sacred geometry, you'll know about him. So I got all this knowledge and um, we had a really good funder too. We had the Kohlberg Foundation that was really ready to fund us, but unfortunately egos got in the way and it never really got off the ground. But it was an amazing learning experience for me to meet all these people, to learn about labyrinths and sacred geometry and ley lines and dowsing and the golden ratio, the golden mean ratio, learning about Dan Winter, who is very controversial, but I would encourage you to look him up. If you can get through 15 minutes of one of his lecture, you're a powerful person, let me tell you. So anyway, so I, you know, I've, I, for some reason, have spent my life with very interesting people that I never, ever thought I would meet in a million years. And, and one of those is some of the, and I'm not going to drop a name, but very important Native American elders I have met in person, and I hold very dear in my heart. Um, so and I was led to sacred ceremonies and with some pretty important people um, that really have 
um, a strong message. And basically one of them is a eagle and condor prophecy, which breaks my heart with what's going on now, but I won't get into that because I want to be able to put this up on um, YouTube. So I've had a lot of this earth wisdom where I've walked into it without even knowing it because that obviously is my um, life's mission. And I think it was, I might've been 89. I'm not sure on the year. It was part of a harmonic convergence. So it was two back in the eighties, I believe. And so one of them I knew about and I did um, a ceremony in one of my neighbor's fields and I ended up having an out of body experience. Um, basically I um, put energy into my hands and I touched the earth and, the, and made a commitment to mother earth. And the moment I did that, I left my body. Uh, I don't think I've spoken about that too often, but no, I decided- this is, the heard, this is the first I've heard of it. The, it was a very profound experience, but I haven't talked about it because I don't feel I've been living that mission of using my voice for Mother Earth, because with all everything that's going on in the world, even the UFOs, we have to remember what planet we are on and that we need to take care of our planet. And that's why yes. the body and the Earth ecosystems are totally intertwined. So yep. when our ecosystems of the earth is sick, we so can't be, bodies. so are our bodies, it's very, we can still be well, but it's more difficult for it, uh, us to have complete wellness the way that we were supposed to have complete wellness with. Right. So, so I might even want to go into historically, I think the narrative um, of our history needs to be corrected a little bit here about how col colonism um, has affected all races, not just a certain few. This goes really deep. And I think that's something we will be talking about. And no Joyce agrees with me on that, but it really is, has to do, I'm not, like I said, I'm not gonna go into detail, but she knows what I'm talking about. It's just our history. It needs to be corrected. And we need to, I, I believe there's a lot of misinformation about true history, especially, yeah, especially, especially for people on my skin tone. Just saying, I have nothing against any skin tone, but I'm just saying my history has been hidden and lost. And I really want to delve into that. And so that we'll be talking about the burning times and some other stuff, then I will make sure I back it up with some facts. So I think that really um, gives us a good synopsis of what we're about and what we're willing to delve into. So that's why not all of our content will be up on YouTube. So it will be up on, on a podcast platform. I'm going to use Anchor to get that out. And then it will also be on Somebody says, I can't even say it, but B-I-T-C-H-U-T-E <laughs> when the content is not user-friendly for a certain platform. platform. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> and she may end up finishing my sentences. This is true. So what else do they Joyce? I think we'll probably wrap up now. So, Well, you know, I just want to say, so as you can see, this podcast is very diverse in the way of topics and what, what's going to be discussed. And I wanna encourage you that if you have a topic that you wanna know more about, to go ahead and leave a comment, You know, subscribe any way that you can, and please feel free to share this because we have a lot, between us, we have a lot of knowledge, a lot of years of knowledge, and we wanted to get it out to the public and educate them so they realize that there is a better way of living life and how the earth and the body are so interconnected and why it's so important that we take care of our earth and take care of our body. Right, so yes, so remember to like, comment and subscribe. Your comments are so important to us because it gives us feedback because this is a new venture for us and we want this to be, we want it to be successful, right? 
who doesn't, right? Because like I said, we have probably close to 120 years of knowledge combined. So we got a lot to share and we think the time is now, if it has ever been, right. the time is now to share this information and share it far and wide. So I guess we will say till next Wednesday. Well, I have one more thing I wanna add. And the thing is, is that this podcast isn't about us, it's about exactly. you. It's, exactly. it's about helping you. So we wanna help you win the Oscar for having a great successful life and being full of the knowledge that we have. So let us give it to you and make you that rock star. Excellent, excellent. So what I like to say in closing is many blessings. Remember to get out there and be wild. And we'll talk about why I say wild a lot too. Get out there, be wild, and remember to breathe. And, and shine your light. Amen. Till next time. Bye. Bye.